Thank you. Thank you for inviting me here, and, and thank you for having this event as well. Um, I'm not sure there's really enough realisation out there, as there should be, that we're currently marching towards a cliff edge, um, absolutely momentous changes with unknown consequences are very, very near. And in Parliament, as MPs, uh, we're in a situation where legislation or a vote in Parliament about leaving the European Union is due to be held towards the end of the year. I can't give you a date. Um, no one seems to know a date. Um, September, October, November, some people say later. Um, who knows what it is, but sometimes towards the end of the year. The House of Lords um, voted against the government on, I think, 14 different aspects. 15, right? I missed one. 15 aspects of uh, policy on leaving Europe. Um, the government don't like that. They will probably try to overturn all of those or, or some of those. Um, great uncertainty, but one thing is sure, that unless something changes, we're marching along towards that clock. And I think there is very little realisation out there with people going about their business, paying maybe scant attention to what's on the news, on what's happening, worrying about their job, making a living, uh, getting by of what is actually there. And what I want to do is just to make a few references to what I think the impact of leaving Europe, as we see it now, is likely to be on, on young people, indeed in terms of, of future generations. And um, Firstly, the economy. You know, the government has tried unsuccessfully in the end to hide the various economic impact studies that have been made about the likely consequences of leaving the EU in, in the way that we're talking about, or leaving it at all, in my, in my view. And all of those studies show a weakening economy, uh, far less growth, in some cases a great deal less growth than would have otherwise happened, and with a differential impact on different regions of the country, um, including this part of the country, to be affected very badly. And indeed, that impact has already started to happen. Economic growth is down. We have already been affected by the uncertainty about what is happening. And if the economy is going to go into some kind of decline or not grow in the way that was anticipated, that means two, th two things. It has an impact on jobs. It has an impact on people's standards of living. And it has an impact on national funds available to fund public services which is so important to all of us. So, in all, a pretty poor outlook. And threats to jobs as well, looking in the future. Um, which jobs are going to be available? Perhaps some of that is unknown. But no certainty at all about maintaining employment rights, which are so important. And for young people, you know, more young people than in previous generations are actually in part-time, more insecure jobs. So the whole question of employment rights matters even more. And then issues to do with consumer issues, um, to do with environmental standards, those, are, those all impact on jobs and the kind of society that we will be. So I want to mention some specifics as well um, in terms of young people. At, at the moment, about 15,000 young people are in other parts of Europe funded by Erasmus uh, scholarships. Uh, doing interchanges, exchanges, studying in other countries as part of Europe. Now, that looks as if that's going to end. Now, it's, there's some uh, discussion that maybe after leaving the EU um, with that massive exit bill, that uh, we'll then start want to pay to retain membership of some of these programmes, some of the organisations. I, I don't know if that's going to be possible, I don't know if it's going to happen, and, and nobody else knows either. But the Erasmus programme, which has done such great things, has given so many young people opportunities to look beyond this country, to get new ideas, to be with other European people, and will, will be lost. And only last week, um, a highly skilled science research student came to see me in my office 
And he was part of, not Erasmus, but he was, well, he wanted to be part of Horizon 2020 programme, a scientific research programme, again, funded through European programmes. And he was explaining to me what was happening and telling me that there were many highly skilled people with scientific knowledge in Liverpool now leaving and going to other positions in other European countries because of uncertainty about funding for their research programmes. And he was explaining to me that uh, to take up a position, a research position, in other parts of Europe which he was looking at, it, it would need... Uh, funding for, I think it was four or five years, but there is some guarantee, but it only goes up to 2020. And he thought it meant that he would have to stay. Sorry, that would mean that for him to stay here. He thought he might have to stay. Again, great uncertainty, and it means very skilled people are leaving, and that means fewer opportunities and, and could conceivably threaten the viability of some of our institutions. And certainly parts of the work at Liverpool University um, are very highly funded, funded to a very high degree by European programmes. The availability of students to come here and to leave here and that interchange, exchange of knowledge and expertise around Europe. So that's something which I think rarely gets into the newspapers. I don't think many people understand much about that, but I think very, very important indeed. So those are just some of the issues. Um, young people on the whole are very much against us leaving the EU. But I don't think there is enough understanding of what it is actually going to mean in specifics. And that doesn't just relate to young people, it relates to other people as well. So I started off saying that we're marching towards a, the clock and, and a vote that's to come at the end of this year, we think, and who knows what's going to come afterwards. But we're very, very far away from being at the end of the road. One of the achievements that we did make in Parliament as MPs was to get a decision to have a what is called a meaningful vote in Parliament. On It's not really a final deal, is it? It's, it's a deal about leave a transitional implementation phase, whatever you want to call it. We don't know what comes later. So I don't think that all is over, and there are also um, campaigns now for what is being called a, a people's vote, a vote on, on the final deal, um, which I hope will happen. So we're not, it's not over yet, but I think one of the things that all of us should do is to try and raise awareness of these issues outside of meetings like this, so that people who will be affected do understand what might happen, and hopefully we can have more raised voices out there and people making those voices and concerns known to their MPs, because that is very, very important where votes are actually going to take place. So hopefully we can do something to stop what I believe is going to be a catastrophe actually taking place. Thank you.